All right, so I'm going to show you what the, uh, the homework assignment is. It's already there in the assignments section. It's two items similar to homework number three, where in homework number three, I gave you a sheet of instructions and then something to fill out. Remember, that was the company profile, so that you know a little bit about your own company, so that I can know about your company. Assignment five is going to be similar in that I've got an, uh, some instructions for you and then another sheet to fill out. So I'm going to download both of them and open them just to show you. And again, you can print them uh, when I'm done talking, please. And the first thing is the instruction sheet, the PDF. Uh, and there it's pretty straightforward. I'm just saying that this is uh, the fifth assignment. You need to fill it in with your name and so forth. It's due a week from today, April 1st, and that's not a joke. And uh, it's going to be due via email, so you don't need to print it out. You don't even need to print it out and fill it out by hand. You could if you want, but this is going to be, again, filling out a digital document, and then you send me the document, and I'll look at it, and if I need to um, comment about anything, then I'll let you know. But if we look at the actual form itself, because there is the assignment, and then there is the form. Now this assignment is the marketing strategy assignment. Last week we started to talk about Twitter. Remember two weeks ago I put out some videos about Twitter. Last week we worked with Twitter together. There was a si an assignment that's due today that you should have been using Twitter throughout the whole week. You can of course still do it uh, to get points. But Twitter is a form of marketing. It's a form of connecting with an audience as, as I talked about last time. And I had you create Twitter and, and use it and, and so forth, but maybe not exactly with a plan. That's okay now because this assignment is now let's make think about making more of a plan about everything that we're going to do with marketing, which in short is social media and um, all of the networks that we have to work with, like Twitter and Facebook and all of that. That's all a form of marketing, a form of advertising. So if you open that Word document, you'll have a spot to fill in your company name again and, and the date and so forth. And then a few questions to ask yourself and to answer. And I've got examples. So we'll go through each of these. The big question that you're going to ask yourself is, what do you want to accomplish? You have a presence online for a reason. Are you trying to sell something? Are you trying to build awareness? Are you artistic and want people to appreciate your work? Do you have a group you belong to that needs more members? So what's your question? Why are you online? Take a moment to write about what you want to accomplish with your online presence, which will be your website, your social media, everything that you do online. Why are you online? Not just because you, you hear that that's the thing that you need to do, but you have to think, why do you want to be online? What do you want to accomplish online? I've got my example here. Vic.co wishes to create a powerful social media presence because we want to interact with existing customers and through word of mouth reach new customers. We want to connect with people on Instagram in a very visual way. So a couple of reasons why this company, fictional company of mine, wants to be online. Uh, to interact with existing customers. So if we've currently got customers for our web design company, we want to interact with them, maybe do some tech support, maybe um, make them aware of something new and useful to them. We want to get new customers. We might not be able to uh, to sustain ourselves on like the two customers that we have. Maybe we need a few more customers. Word of mouth, advertising, that's another goal for us to try to find new customers. And here I've noted that I sp especially I want to get good at Instagram. I want to use Instagram. I hear that it's hot. I want to get in on it. Maybe I don't know how just yet, but at least having it articulated as a goal will help me figure out what I need to do uh, to reach those goals. I don't know if I mentioned it last time, but actually Instagram has uh, more users uh, than Twitter. Twitter, at last count, a couple of months ago, had about 285 million users worldwide. And Instagram has a little bit more than 300 million. So a lot of more people are on Instagram. Now, which is more valuable than the other one? That's hard to say, because that depends on your goals, your audience, and on a variety of other uh, factors. But remember, Instagram is much more of a visual medium. You can do pictures and stuff on Twitter also, of course, but Instagram is very popular for, for, um, for uh, 
did I say video? I meant pictures. Instagram is very popular for pictures. Of course, it does have video also. But that goes back to what do you want to accomplish online? Why are you online? So you write a sentence or two to answer that, like the example. The next question is, who is your target audience? It's important to focus on a target audience. It's nice to say that everyone would be interested in my product or my case or my group, whatever. But it just isn't true in the real world. Who are the people that would uh, like to know more about your product? What are their age ranges, gender, economic group, musical style? In short, who would care about your product? So I always get people that maybe I'm trying to work with them and we ask them this early on, these questions. Ask them that question, uh, who's your target audience? And they say, well, everyone. I had someone a couple of years ago that uh, I was talking to and asked them that and he said, yeah, everyone, everyone's gonna want my product. Digging down further, well, his product was like a brand new advanced baby stroller. No, not everyone wants that or needs it. So you do have to define what your target audience is. So he eventually, well, we eventually figured out his target audience is going was going to be uh, new uh, young families, new young Latino families that had just had children. So then once he figures out that, you know, theoretical target audience, then he can start to do social media or start to make a website that will target that audience. So uh, nowadays it's more about being specific. Who will care? Because there's, as I said, 300 million people on Instagram, 280 million people on Twitter, uh, over a billion people on Facebook. There's lots and lots of an audience, but to, to reach the ones that would care about you, we should be specific. And then here, do you have an aspirational competition? Oh, wait, let me get back. Uh, I forgot to read the example here. The people who want to hire Vic.co are people that are trendy, but know what they want. There are people that are in their 30s who are successful, own their own company, need a website and know the value of web design. So here I've created a fictional person, or I've created here a persona of someone that would be my ideal customer. And so see how specific I was. I even said like age range, male, female, doesn't matter to us, but they should own their own company. Uh, they understand the value of web design. So this is the ideal customer that we would want to go for. Think about answering that question that same kind of way, being specific. Aspirational competition. It's good to have role models both in life and in business. Is there a business you see that makes you think, I want to be like that, or a business that makes you think, I want to do that, but better? List a company, a person, a brand, etc., that you feel is in competition with you, but that you would like to emulate. Why do you want to emulate them? So I'll give you a real world example here. Uh, one of the clients that I have is a restaurant, a Mexican food restaurant. I mention them all the time. The company is Akias Texcoco. They've got a restaurant in Chula Vista, expanded to Los Angeles. When we started to work with them a couple of years ago, uh, and this question came up, uh, we say, well, okay, what, first of all, aspirational competition. Who are you competing with in your, in your, in your niche, in your businesses that you want to be like, that you aspire to be like? And he said, well, I want to be, or I'm trying to be like Phil's Barbecue. How many of you have heard of Phil's Barbecue? So they're, if you haven't, they're a big name in, in uh, barbecue in San Diego. Uh, perhaps the biggest name, uh, for better or for worse. You know, everyone's got an opinion about everything, even barbecue. But Phil's Barbecue seems to be like the number one name when people talk about where's a good barbecue joint in San Diego. Again, that's all opinion. But uh, Phil's Barbecue is who this um, client said he wants to be like because even though his restaurant is a Mexican food restaurant, it's not like classic barbecue that you think of with barbecue sauce and all of that. It's, uh, it's uh, actually barbacoa de borrego. You know, it's a very specific kind of barbecue, Mexico, Mexico City style barbecue. But he wants to be like Phil's barbecue because he says, people are out the door waiting 45 minutes just to walk in every day. Uh, they are synonymous. They are well known for barbecue restaurants in San Diego. And so the owner of Texcoco told us, I want to be like that, where I want people waiting out the door just to come in. He does have on the weekends a waiting list. He does have people that if you just roll up on a Saturday, you probably are going to wait half an hour to get in. That's not quite true throughout the week, 
but he wants to be like that throughout the week, which is what Phil's Barbecue is. He wants to be known as like the premier Mexican food restaurant in San Diego. So again, he's got competition, not exactly in the same space, but he's aspiring to be like them for various reasons. So you have to figure out what other companies, what other brands, what other bands, what others are doing that you kind of think, I want to do that too. And maybe you put aside your pride for a moment and, 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 and look at who else is doing it. And then you have to feel confident enough to say, I want to be like them, but better. So my example, Vic.co feels that XY Designs is our aspirational competition because they have a large clientele and their designs are unique and modern. So again, this is a fictional web design company. We looked at another web design company. We want to be like them. And what we like about them is that their designs are unique and modern. We want to kind of look like that or have the style to be modern <coughs> to um, convince people that this is a good design choice for their websites. Personally, again, in, in my company, we, we, we take on clients that have an idea of how their website wants to look, and of course we take input from the client, but then again they're hiring us because we know what we're doing. So if they say, yeah, I want a cool animated spinning logo at the top right, because I saw someone else do it, uh, the answer to that is no. That's passe. You don't want to have animation like that on your website anymore. That was the old style. Uh, we're saying we, you want a more modern style, and we give examples. Uh, we give different comps, which are versions of the design, and then convince the client that uh, this style will work well for them. But knowing what else other people are doing, the competition, will let us aspire to be like them and then be better than them. On the previous assignment, we had a mission statement, and on this one we've got a vision statement. So a mission statement tells the world where you stand. A vision statement tells the world where you're going. Write a statement that makes a prediction about what you want to accomplish as a company or brand. Vic.co will be known for providing eye-catching web design for San Diego's most elegant restaurants. So that example I'm tying together, who is our target audience? Restaurants. And we're saying we're predicting uh, we're going to be known for eye-catching web design for restaurants. Um, yeah, maybe we want to do websites for everyone, but again, we want to specify that it might be better for us to go after a target demographic, restaurants. So we're saying we want to be known for web design. For, uh, yes? Did you know that the uh, counselors here on campus are giving out free USBs to students as long as they finish this like I didn't know no, I didn't know that, but thank you. Uh, I'm in the middle of a lecture, but uh, if you want to talk about that in a little bit, I will talk to you. No problem. If thank you can tell them, just go to the counseling center and like, ask them for one of those. They have like hundreds and hundreds of them. Okay, then. Thank you. Just an FYI. Thank you. Sorry for interrupting your lecture. No problem. No. He's okay, a former student, but it's okay. Um, so um, here is the past and then the future, or where I'm currently at, the mission statement. Where, where are we currently at? What are our skills or abilities at this point? And then what do we want to do in the future? Where are we going toward? So um, that's the vision statement. That's the future, what we're going to go for. And it's okay to dream big. It's okay to really be like this is our goal we're gonna reach it because if you don't have a goal you're not striving toward anything so if you do want to be like we're gonna be number one in uh, you know San Diego bakeries whatever your your really your target is um, write that down it can change all of this stuff can change of course just like the first one the um, company profile if you thought of new things you can go ahead and change it, resubmit it if you want. I'll take a look at it, give you comments on it. And this also, when you turn it in, we'll look at it, I'll grade it, I'll comment on it if, if you want. And then if you want to change it, that's fine. And we'll look at it, your evolution of your documentation. Then finally, at the end here, unique selling proposition, the USP. What do you provide your customers that no one else can? What makes you stand out from the rest? How do you solve, how do you uniquely solve their problems? 
Vic.co is based in San Diego, and many from our team graduated from Southwestern College, San Diego State University, and UCSD. We therefore know the local culture. We can create compelling websites that cater to San Diego companies. So what we're trying to say here that's unique is, yes, there's plenty of other web design companies. What's unique about us is that we're all graduates of local colleges. We all live here. We know the culture. We want to work with local San Diego companies because we, we live and breathe San Diego, and, I, and we think we can provide the best experience for San Diego companies. So that's what is unique about us that will sell us so that we will uh, get a job you know, over another web design company, yet another web design company. Uh, so again, think about how you're solving the client's problems. The problem is maybe I'm, I have, a, I have a, a company and a website, but I'm not selling enough. That's their problem. So how, do we, how do we fix that problem? By whatever we are doing in our company as we define it elsewhere, and then what is unique to us? Why would they choose us over someone else? Now, I teach this class here at Southwestern and then also up in Kearney Mesa for San Diego City College. Uh, but the class that you guys are taking is better because it's 18 weeks long and the one up there is just four weeks long so they don't get all of this depth that you guys get. Now uh, what sucks for you guys is you guys get homework and they don't. But um, I do give you a lot more uh, detail. So someone asked on, uh, on that particular thing there about like web designers. They say, how am I going to convince someone that I try to sell myself, that I want to be a web designer for someone? How do I convince someone? that they say, well, I just got an offer, and it's like $300 cheaper than your offer. You know, how do you convince those kinds of people? And there's two things you can do. One is that you can try to convince them, or one is that you can walk away. Because maybe you don't want a client that is going to be that troublesome, that is going to be pinching pennies, that is going to be on you for everything. You take these classes, you educate yourself, you pay your tuition, you buy your books, you learn this stuff, you're worth it. You're gaining this knowledge to be a good web designer or social media marketer or whatever it is you're doing. So if you're trying to get a job from someone that doesn't realize that value, they might not be worth it. And hopefully you're at a position where you can say no sometimes. And in the beginning that of course is difficult because you're just starting off. But as you, design, as you define yourself, like I said up here, we want to make websites for people that know the value of web design. We've we've written it down for ourselves, we've articulated it, that we don't want to deal with cheapos. We want to deal with people that understand the value of this stuff. So back to the question, how do you convince these people that don't feel that your website is worth $500? Again, you have two options. You say, okay, thank you for your time, good luck, and uh, here's my card. Or you try to convince them by asking them further questions about, okay, these people are saying they'll do this for that amount of price, what exactly are they giving you? And you try to uh, show from your point of view why what you're giving them is more or better. They might say, well, for $300, they're going to make my website. You're saying, well, for $500, we're going to make your website and also set up your Twitter and your social media and so forth. So you're telling them what all of that is, is worth. You're explaining to them. And then still, if they say, well, Twitter, you know, that's where my kids are on and sharing cat pictures. Again, that's another indication. Maybe the person that you're trying to get a, the business of is not really worth it for you. Because I've had that too when I was starting off 10 years ago that companies were really penny pinching. Where like, it's just a website, my cousin can do it or my kids can do it, he's taking a class, he'll do it. But yeah, you'll get results that maybe are not as professional as they could be, as they could be because they don't have the experience. Um, so you have to decide, is it worth it to try to get business from companies that are kind of problematic? And it could be worth it. It could be that they are going to pay you well. It's just a lot of speed bumps and a, and, a, and a tough boss, but it could be worth it. I'm giving this assignment because, again, this is anyone can teach you how to use Dreamweaver or Flash or WordPress or any of the software. You can learn it for free on YouTube. You can buy books. You can take this class or you can take my classes up in Kearney Mesa. You can take classes you can learn. But I also want to talk about the full picture, uh, every aspect about all of this stuff. So uh, this is an important aspect too. This is sort of the, the theoretical stuff, isn't it? I'm not telling you press this button and do this thing. I'm giving you concepts that hopefully you can synthesize and then apply 
in the real world. Uh, and sometimes it sounds, um, you know, kind of nebulous or theoretical, and that's why I try to give you an assignment. I try to give you feedback. If you need even more information, of course, I'm happy to help and so forth. But this is the assignment for next week, due April 1st. But we're going to wrap up the main talk about it and give you the rest of the day to work on it. And if you're done with it, great. Turn it in and enjoy spring break. If not, um, you can do it at your, at your leisure and turn it in before the deadline, which is in the middle of spring break. Uh, and you'll get your points. Any general questions then on the marketing strategy assignment? Or anything about web design and stuff? So again, I try to give this to you because this is stuff that we do for real clients and it works and it's effective and it's useful and I give this to you. So I'm going to uh, end the main lecture and give you some lab time and I'll be here to answer your questions and such.